Hi friends! Today I'm going to give you five tips on taking your digital illustration to the next level. If you like these digital illustration tip videos, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to get notified for when I upload a video to the channel. Tip number one, choosing a contextual palette. And by a contextual palette, I mean picking a palette that makes sense in the context of your drawing. So for example, if you're drawing something that's set in the desert, you want to make sure you're using warm and natural tones. If you're doing something in nighttime, you want to use something that's cooler, darker, uh, maybe even more like less saturated colors. The reason for doing this is so that you avoid using local colors. Local color is a term that describes the natural color of an object. Something that's super, that's not adulterated by lighting or anything, it's not affected by anything at all. For example, a red apple will always be perceived by your brain as being a red apple, despite it being um, in a different environment or despite the time of day. So for another example, if you did want to draw a red apple, realistically in the color scheme that you're using the apple won't stay red you if you're drawing it in the morning like on a kitchen table you're going to want to make sure that red is more of a warm orangey red to give context to the situation whereas if you're drawing an apple at night at someone's desk it's going to be darker it's going to be moodier it's going to be more red with purple undertones so even though we know that the apple is red, given the situation in lighting, it may not always be red when drawing or painting. If anything, if you want to use local colors, it's always good to have that as your base palette, but you're always going to want to tweak those colors given the environment of your setting. So, for example, I like to use pink backgrounds. I love pink undertones in my drawings, and I love to just have a predominantly pink palette. <laughs> With my palette, I use pink as my main color, my main warm color with cool undertones. And then I supplement that pink with lots of purples and lots of blues. And I'll even add in a contrast of like yellow or orange to give an extra boost to the brightness. Another good tip for avoiding local colors is by just changing the background of your scene. Even if it's just going to be a blank scene, it's always good to just start something that isn't white because white is neutral. It will show the clashing of colors. How about just try changing the background to a blue, to a mint, maybe even to a dark midnight blue, and then testing colors, layering colors on top and seeing what colors match well with the background. That'll help give the whole illustration some context, some scenery it will even just imply that there's something going on midnight blue could be it's nighttime pink could be sunset blue just regular blue could just be underwater it'll help give context to your scene when you experiment with the colors it'll make more sense and it'll bring a sense of harmonious color schemes together tip number two adding shading generally this tip it goes all across the art world shading will immediately give depth. That's what it's there for. It'll give more to the drawing. It'll show the relationship between time and space of the character, where it's placed within the setting. It just helps bring realism to your drawing. Unless you're going for a flat illustration style, it's always good to um, add shading to give depth to your illustration. And this is good to start when you're sketching out your idea before you even start the illustration process. You want to make sure that you're putting all the layers on. You want to make sure that you're getting all the lighting correct with the shading. And it's always easy to just be like, I'm just going to shade this and this is what's going to be. No, uh, lighting will, different lighting will give different shadings and that will um, convey different moods. So say that I have something being lit behind me, I'm going to be dark and that's going to give a more intense feeling. Whereas if I had um, light shadows casting from above, from afar, that'll give way for more of a bright composition. It's not gonna weigh down the drawing. And it's good to think in terms of like, shadow means weight. 
and how that's gonna what that's gonna mean for your drawing and what the mood is gonna convey because of the shading. Depending on your style, you can digitally paint the shading on by just mixing um, and changing the opacity of your brushes and your um, and the paints that you choose. Or if you want to go for something that's more simpler, that's more stylized, you can use your layer styles and create an own separate layer and play with one color. You can add gradients um, and you can set that layer to its own layer style. And by layer style, I mean multiply, overlay, you can screen, um, and that will make your drawing lighter. So it's good to play around with all these layer style styles that are in Procreate, that are in Photoshop. Um, they can give so many different um, meanings to your drawing, whatever it can convey. It's good. It's just good to play around with and see what each layer style can do for your drawing. Really, they're there to help you. And you don't want to have to feel like you're starting from scratch. You can always start using multiply and overlay and you can go from there. It, it takes a bunch of practice, but it's really good to get the basic shading down just to show at least a little bit of depth. Tip number three, adding ambient lighting. It goes without saying that with shading comes lighting and it's only because of light that we have shade. And by adding ambient lighting, I mean by adding an extra layer of light, like a glow or something that's shining off of your character. And I tend to do this by just adding maybe like a light, a soft light yellow outline along the face of a character, along the, the edges of the character, like something is being lit from behind. It kind of gives a sense of mystery to the character. It gives a sense of um, magic as where is this character at that they're being lit from the side, from behind. You can even add on as a separate layer, you can add a glow look where you can use a soft airbrush and just lightly draw over that harsh glow line and it'll show that the light is bouncing off the character. I think this is, um, it's more fun when you use neon colors like um, neon pink, neon blue. Yellow is good too, just as a basic color, but with the neon pink and neon blue it kind of just looks like there might be like a neon sign nearby or there might be something in the background that's just mysterious like what could have what could be em emitting that pink or blue light i think that adds a little bit of character to the drawing tip number four line work variation i rely heavily on my uh, my apple pen's pressure sensitivity i love to vary my line work um you can see it in my drawings my illustrations on instagram and by varying line work i mean changing f the line to be thick to thin as you're drawing and so uh, when i apply pressure to my tablet the, um, the thicker and bolder the line would be the less pressure i use when i draw the thinner more delicate the line will appear and so generally uh, thicker lines will mean that there's depth to the line, to the object that you're drawing, that there's tension, that there's weight, that there's something that's um, pulling and grasping on your object. And I love to play around, like especially in commissions when I'm drawing people's shirts and their folds and their cardigans and, and whatever. Um, I love to start off like at the shoulder where um, there's just a light soft line of the shirt and as there's more tension, especially around the underarm area, around the elbow, the thicker the lines will come across because there's more tension where there's more folds. Line work doesn't necessarily have to mean outlining your drawing, even though it's a very popular style. I do that in my own personal drawings, but when I do commission stuff, I kind of go for color blocking. And even then I still vary my line work. I gotta make sure that there's at least some depth showing in the folds and the hair and in even the face whenever i draw clothes or even hair i love to make sure that my line work indicates weight and depth for example when it comes to hair it's always going to be thinner nice and delicate at the top so i make sure my lines are a little bit thin as i'm drawing hair but when it comes down to the bottom of a girl's hair especially there's more weight being dragged down and so i tend to make sure that my lines are thicker towards the bottom of the hair that will give weight to the drawing and it's always good to remember the thicker your 
uh, the thicker your line is, the more stylized your drawing is going to be. So a good way to illustrate this is traditional manga versus uh, chibi. Chibis are, uh, chibi drawings are always going to be uh, using, will always use thicker lines because they're cute, they need your attention, they're like, hey look at me, I'm adorable, I'm like, you can't resist my look, whereas manga uh, will always be more delicate, and of course it depends manga to manga, like action scenes will always be thicker and bolder because something is happening, something wants your attention, if there's a fist being thrown at you, that fist is going to be the thickest thing <laughs> in the panel, and it's always good to Think about that too. Action will always require thicker lines. It will need some, it'll show that tension. It'll give you a depth to the story, depth to the character, depth to the panel. It occupies time and space and it's good to remember that. And even if you aren't inking, if you're not using traditional line work in your drawing, using line work as an indication of folds in clothing or even like as a shadow underneath the chin, it always gives interest to your drawing. You don't want to, I mean unless you're going for that, you don't want to make sure your drawing's uh, super flat if you're going for a different type of style. If you're going for like a totally straight up flat drawing, no line work, just all same pen width, same flat coloring, that's no problem too as long as you stick with it. And if you want to go for something that's more stylized to you or even like mimic realism, it's always good to just make sure that you're varying your line. That'll help give your drawing the depth that it needs and it, it'll just give your drawing a standout quality to it. Tip number five, choosing the right brushes. This tip is mainly focused on the style that you're going for, what you want to achieve in your art. I personally love going for brushes that have that are highly texturized, that kind of have a old traditional look to it, like inking. I love the inking brushes in Procreate. I specifically use the Tinderbox one where it has um, all kinds of frayed edges on the um, on the edges of the brush. It kind of looks like ink is kind of like mixing with water almost. And I also love using the Nico Roll brush for when I'm like color blocking, especially for backgrounds and stuff. It gives so much like grungy texture to the background. It's, it doesn't normally like fill in the space all that, uh, all, all the space, um, but it will leave like pockets of um, white. It'll leave pockets so that anything underneath the layer will pop through and I, I absolutely love that color layering look. Luckily in Procreate, there's a lot of artistic brushes you can use. I love the Wild Light brush. I specifically use this for clouds and I can actually vary my line work with this. It's, I don't, I can't even describe the brush. It's um, the lighter I touch on the tablet, the more translucent the brush is. It kind of acts like watercolor where if you add pigment to uh, water, the color kind of splays out. A little bit and that's how this brush reacts into uh and procreate and so i love to use this for cloud specifically to get this nice soft a uh, fluffy look and i'll just honestly i'll just draw and i'll just keep adding my layers for the clouds and i'll adjust my opacity i adjust the pressure of my brush when i uh, put too much pressure it becomes like a huge water blob the tighter or the lighter that my um, pressure is, it becomes uh, more opaque and I can get finer details. And so I love layering with this brush. It makes, it's just a really good brush for clouds and it's my go-to. Now, if you wanna go for a more cleaner flat look, there's nothing wrong with using just a regular airbrush. And this will give a smoother, a cleaner look to your drawing. It's really good for stylized drawings. If you just want to go for flat illustrations, that's perfect for that. Or if you just want to do basic color blocking, or if you just want to do some color studies, it's great. It's all you really need. And with an airbrush, you can give softer edges to your airbrush. You can give glow. You can, um, you can blend a little bit easier. But if you want to go for more of the grungy look, those are fun to use, and I highly recommend experimenting. It all depends on how you want your, your art to look. Those are my five tips for taking your digital illustration to the next level. 
If you have any additional tips, feel free to share them in the comments below. I love to read what you guys have to say. Until next time, bye friends. <laughs>